Hey everybody, Rick Alexander, your host for today's episode. I'll be speaking with Jenny Blake, one of my co-hosts. We're gonna talk about how to prep for your very first bikini, figure, or bodybuilding competition. One of the really cool things about Lionheart Radio is that we get to feature people from all walks of life in the active lifestyle, and that includes powerlifters, strongman athletes, crossfitters, ultra-endurance athletes, and of course, bodybuilders and bikini competitors. And one of the requests that we get is people want to know how they can get involved in these things. And maybe you have an inclination that you want to try something new. And when you hear from some of our guests who are out there crushing it, it that inclination grows until you really want to uh, try putting one of your feet in the pool. And so over the course of the next few months, what we're going to try to do is bring you a lot of uh, advice on how to get involved in the various things that we cover. And today is going to be no different. I will say at the end of the episode, we forgot to do the Lionheart Kicker, which is the question based on advice. And so uh, just stay tuned when you hear the music. We went back and we edited the Lionheart Kicker back in. And it's definitely worth sticking around for. So um, without further ado, you guys enjoy the show. All right, you're listening to Lionheart Radio, and I'm your host, Rick Alexander, founder of Louis Aviv in San Diego, California. I say that way too much. I'm here with uh, Jenny Blake today. We're going to talk a little bit about how to prep for a figure competition, a bikini competition, bodybuilding, uh, some kind of competition where you're judged subjectively on what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could say it like that, but I'm super excited. I have so much information, and it's just going to be a big data dump of everything that I've learned through the two competitions that I've done. And I'll start with even, you know, how to, where to start, where to even begin to do this and take you through the whole prep and the competition and then what you need to do after the competition too, which is pretty important. Okay, cool. So for people that are listening to this, why should they listen to you about this? So you mentioned you did two competitions. Like what, I guess, what is your background that, you know, kind of qualifies you uniquely to talk about prepping in general? Right, so my first competition was a little over a year and a half ago, and I always saw it from afar, didn't think it was something I never would do, and my background was um, in cheerleading, I went to CrossFit for a little while, and so I had the background of, you know, working out, but this was something that, oh, maybe... Maybe it's too different. I don't know what it's about. I don't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. And so I did competition last year. I did competition this year. And so I'm still new enough to know the big things that people need to know mm -hmm. and how to tackle this. Uh, but still better enough that I've been through it twice, which is a big process. And you'll see why people only do one or two competitions a year. Yeah. Still, you know, been through it enough that I feel like I can provide pretty solid advice. Okay. And so you were doing CrossFit though. What is it that drew you to want to do this in the first place? Yeah, so I'd been doing CrossFit for three or so years mm -hmm. and I had done a few competitions and it was super fun, but it's coming to the point where I'm like, okay, I can either dive in more to CrossFit yep. and see how far I can take myself there or try something new, which a few people at our gym were doing these competitions. And I wanted to, it was kind of, I kind of put it on my bucket list. The bodybuilding stuff. Right. The yeah. bodybuilding competitions to do before I'm 30 and, mm. you know, see what I can get myself, my body in the best shape that it'll ever be in probably. Um, well, the best shape it'll ever look like it's in. Right. Yeah. yeah. As, as far as aesthetics. Right. Right. Um, and so I said, why not? So I signed Go up. Go for it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I always thought that would be cool. I mean, I've never delved into that. I've always been performance based. But I do think it would be cool to just have those pictures, like for the rest of your life. Like yeah. you did look like that, you did put in that work, and that's one of the cool things that people that are listening to this probably could get drawn to bodybuilding for that reason specifically. Oh, for sure. I mean, you learn so much not only like about yourself, about your determination, your dedication, but so much about nutrition, about training, and maybe you do one and you never want to do it again. Yeah. But I guarantee, then if you go back to doing CrossFit or whatever it is, you're gonna have some nuggets that will help you still maybe you still want to look at the part sure. or maybe um you find that hypertrophy or tempo training actually helps you get stronger in crossfit so you're gonna learn no matter what hmm. okay all right cool so i think a lot of people are familiar with like some of the training stuff like this you know the body part splits and the way that you train for bodybuilding because i think that's how almost everybody gets into working out in the first place mm -hmm. you like go to you know muscle magazine whatever and you see the bodybuilding splits and that's kind of how you get into it 
But for somebody that's listening, what what is the first step like to wanting to get ready for? Obviously, you need to sign up for a competition. Like Actually, you don't even do that first. Okay, so what's first yeah, step? Yeah, really, you don't. You want to wait until about two weeks out to sign up for a competition. But first step oh, is shit. yeah, you need to find a coach, someone okay. who is familiar with this industry and someone who has done this before. Because where this is different from maybe even a, a marathon or even like a half marathon or a CrossFit competition, mm-hmm. which I've done um, a half marathon before in a CrossFit competition before, you can just sign up and then maybe train a little extra more and maybe eat a little better. But you can just go for it and just do it. Right. Where this, you can't. It'll be noticeable. You can't. Yeah, okay. you can't. You're going to be on stage in a little, little material <laughs> yeah. and everyone next to you is putting in the full-fledged work. <laughs> You just can't do that. It's something that takes way more prep than that. So you need to find somebody who's done this before. Okay. It's a totally different world, and you need to find somebody who's in that world that can help you go through all of the things that you're going to be going through. Okay. So that's definitely first step. Second step is determining, which they can help you with, what category yeah, fits how do best you, for you. Yeah, how do you do that? That's what I was wondering about. Like. Yeah, so for me, it was what I kind of wanted okay. to look like, but also where I was. So last year, my first competition, I did a figure competition because I had a solid base from doing CrossFit, yep. but I knew I wanted to gain more muscle. And so figure worked best for me. Going okay. in this next round, because the way the classes are kind of changing and bikinis getting a little more muscle definition, my coach actually convinced me to do both figure and bikini to see how what would kind of work best for me. Okay. And so that's going to de- that's going to decide how much prep time you need to, right? Because if you were to choose bodybuilding, it would have taken you a very long time to put on the mass necessary to do that, right? Or Right. And just to give the listeners an idea of what each category looks like. Yeah, what are they? So, um, of course, there's female and male. Right. And then for female, the I guess you would say not leanest, but the less muscular one is bikini. So it starts off with bikini. And then if you add a little more muscle definition, that's figure. Add mm-hmm. more muscle muscle definition, that's physique. And then you have the bodybuilding girls, which is like the OG, like huge muscles, gangster looking. Um, that's bodybuilding. Girls. That's bodybuilding, okay. right? And then male has similar classes like that. So I was in the bikini and figure competition. Okay, so there's bikini, figure, physique, and bodybuilding. Is right. That what you said. Yep. And is men the same way? Obviously, no bikini, but. No bikini. Men is, bodybuilding is the big, huge, strong dude. Yeah. Then it goes into classic physique, which is kind of in, in between. What is the board shorts? The board shorts is the physique. Okay. Yeah, and classic physique, they still have the little panty looking things. Okay. Yeah. I don't like the board shorts. I just feel like that gives you a reason not to train legs. Yeah. Totally agree, <laughs> but I guess you got to train your calves. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. So then you pick kind of based on. Uh, and you kind of base on where you're at and what your goals are. Right. But also, too, let's talk a little bit about genetic, maybe, ceilings. Because I just listening to people talk about the bodybuilding world, it sounds like you know there's a very unique build that you have to have in order to be good at that. So you need to have big muscle bellies and small joints, for example. Like small, like small waistline, small hips, uh, but, but still like a bigger back, bigger torso. So uh, is... Are there rules like that kind of following all the different categories or, or what has been your experience there? I would say if you're just starting off and just getting into one of these categories, then you don't need to worry about that. But when you get into a level of pro level and probably like Olympia level, yep. yeah, that's going to matter. You okay. know, some people, just like in anything, you can train the exact same, you're going to get different results or maybe you're not going to get the same shape because of the way you're naturally shaped. Okay. But I think... Once you get to that level, you're so tuned in with your body and your coach knows. So maybe you got huge lats. Okay, I'm not going to spend as much time on lats. I'm going to spend more time on my legs because that's what I need. So, okay. yeah, I think when you get to a certain level, that's important. But especially if you're just starting off and just wanting to get a show under your belt, not something that you probably need to concern yourself with yet. Okay, perfect. All right, so step two is you pick a... Uh, category? Yep. And again, your coach will be able to tell you all of this. That's why I highly recommend getting someone who knows all of this stuff. So then they'll be able to tell you your time frame, right? How much time you need to prep for this competition. And coaches will know by looking at where you're at, kind of. Like, yes. Okay, you're they need... should be able to help you. Okay. For sure. And there's coaches. I mean, there's whole companies that this is all they specialize in, <laughs> right? Online and in different locations. For a standard athletic person, is there a 
I guess maybe a rule of thumb or how much time do you think uh, someone that does CrossFit, someone that does, is already athletic and has a decent build? So I would say if you're new to this, three to six months Okay. is a good standard. Um, I would say the standard prep that most people do is 12 weeks or about three months. And that's what I did for my first show because I had that CrossFit build already. And then veterans, I would say a little closer to eight week prep, not because they can prep faster, but because they're more in tune. So they, they're more focused on it and stay in that shape all year round. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily that specific shape all year round, but stay closer to stage, um, stage appearance all year round. So that way the eight weeks, they can just dial it in and get that last body fat percentage off. Okay. How long was your first prep? My first prep was 12 weeks. And then this next prep... I trained, I mean, I train every day anyway, but the training's different and we'll get into that in a little bit, but I did the eight week nutrition prep because that's definitely the hardest and the strictest part and we'll get into that too. Okay, perfect. Yep. And I had done one before, so I kind of knew what to expect. Mm -hmm. Um, So it made it easier to do going into it with the eight week prep. Okay. Yep. So people are probably wondering... What does on prep mean? Why do you keep saying prep? Prep stands for preparation for the show. Simple as that. But you'll hear girls, guys be like, oh, I'm on prep. I'm on prep. Ooh, prep, prep, prep. (laughs) Because it is, you know, I went over this before. It takes such dedication. It takes, you know, you're in it, right? You're in it at that point. Um, So there's three parts to prep. There's, and this is in going from most important to least important. This is just my opinion. Other people probably might have other opinions, but the first is definitely your nutrition and your cardio. Okay. You can't go into a show without those two. Okay. Um, the next is posing. Yeah. Which might... It's su- a whole art in itself. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Might, might surprise some people, mm-hmm. but posing for sure. And then the third is weight training. You got to have some type of program. Um, and you find that to be the least important. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yep. That's crazy. Yeah. Right. You, you never would have thought that, but... Mm-hmm. I mean, you definitely need to do it, no doubt about it, yep. and it needs to, all of these things got to be like number one priority in your life, but as far as in order of importance, that's how I view them. Okay. And we'll get into each of these. So again, with your nutrition, you got to have a coach. It's not just a, oh, I'm going to eat better this week. Like it's, it's way more into it that some coaches follow macro plans or some coaches say, okay, you're going to have steak at this time you're gonna have asparagus hair or, you know people do it differently what i did kind of my first go round was a, if it fits your macros appro- approach and that's what my coach had me on yep um which worked out wonders for me okay yeah it worked out great but going into it the second round my body probably was a little more it knew what i was doing it's adapted right already mm-hmm. yep so i had to you know tighten it up a little more definitely way more quality and and things like that so so I had to, go ahead. That's interesting because, you know, that could be applied to anything. When you start Olympic weightlifting, mm-hmm. you know, at first, or CrossFit, you make huge gains for the first three to six months, right? But then as you get fitter, it, like, it becomes very necessary to dial your approach in to, like, work much more on technique because all those little things. So it's interesting to hear that even in the bodybuilding world when it comes to nutrition, you know, as you get closer and closer and get more advanced in what you're doing, well, then you have to really start dialing in everything. Oh, yeah. And as you get more lean and you lose more weight, it gets harder mm. because you're, again, you're you're just closer. Yep. So it's taking, you know, smaller increments that you may not notice as much. But, uh, I mean, I was measuring all my food. So I had, you know, a, a scale. scale. Okay. I had measuring cups at work where I'm, you know, scooping out my rice. And so, I mean, it's... It's intense, and you got to be on it 24-7. It's not like, oh, miss, forgot to meal prep this week. It's You just can't. Yeah. It's part of it. I mean, don't get Do me wrong. Do you just write off enjoying food for that time, essentially? Cause... No, not at all, because, well, at least my plan was more of, like, macro-based with 89%, you know, quality. Mm-hmm. So... I have my version of tacos, right? I'm still having tacos. It might be lean ground turkey with just a little bit of cheese on the top with um, whole grain tortilla mm. um, with peppers, you know. So it's definitely yeah, way better okay. than just the food cart they have downstairs, but it still tastes good to me. It's not like I'm just on plain chicken and broccoli for every meal. Gotcha. 
right? So I, I mean, I was eating like rice cakes and peanut butters are pretty, pretty standard. Um, let's see. I mean, yeah, chicken, steak, Brussels mm-hmm. sprouts, things like that. So yeah, more whole based food, but it's not like it wasn't enjoyable. Okay. I guess I like food though, so I like it all. Right. Um, I mean, every now and then if I'm like, ooh, I need something, um, Arctic Zero ice cream, which is super Yeah, was that kind of your sugar. go-to to like solve that sugar fix if you yeah. needed it? Okay. Or sugar-free Jello with some whipped cream. Yeah. That's I mean, whipped cream's pretty much fluff, so. That's always been mine too. Yeah. So that's been, um, that was super helpful. Okay. Yep. And as far as supplements, things like that, I mean, protein shakes, um, creatine, I actually used the Lionheart Refuel, mm-hmm. not even a plug, I actually <laughs> used it. <laughs> okay. And then um, I added some leucine in okay. just to help build the muscle. And then I also did, oh, BCAAs, added some of those in there too. Okay. In yep. addition to the refuel. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and then, let's see, I mean, all of this changes like the, all that's pretty standard up until a week or two out. Mm-hmm. I would say probably two weeks out is when you stop with all of the supplements. One week out, you're adding in asparagus four times a day to help flush the um, water mm-hmm. in and out of your body. And the whole prep, for me, everyone's going to have different targets based on how much they weigh and things like that. But for my prep, I had a gallon of water every day. So not only am I measuring food out, um, you know, every day I'm measuring out my water intake. I'm going to the bathroom like every five minutes. Yeah, right. <laughs> but especially during that last week, you've got to have everything so dialed in that you're, um, you know, not only measuring things, you're putting more whole foods in, you're taking out the supplements, you're taking out all sugar and fake sugar and added mm-hmm. sugar. Um, so even you'd be surprised how much of that is in even, you know, more quality I put in quotations quality yeah, food right I wouldn't be surprised but people would oh yeah yeah for sure because I've cut sugar out and it's miserable oh yeah oh yeah but, I mean even the fake sugar like is in all right. of these protein bars and and things like that but that helps so much in um in inflammation mm. so the whole last week you really want to give it all that give it all that extra you can Damn. so um so yeah the last week too you're adding a ton of asparagus in so it flushes out but you're also, I hate to say that you're manipulating your water intake, but you kind of are. Um, so the last week you go into it and let's say Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, let's say your show's on Saturday. Yep. You're, I'm doing a gallon and a half every day. Jesus. So then Wednesday, I cut down to a gallon. Thursday, I cut down to a half a gallon. Friday, I'm at a fourth a gallon, which... To a normal person, that might be normal for them, right. but because I'm so used to having that much more water, mm-hmm. I can I can feel it. I'm like, yeah. a little thirsty, a little thirsty. And then actual show day, you're just sipping. So even though you are getting a good amount of water in, you know, throughout it, I wouldn't say you're just cutting out water completely the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, you're kind of manipulating your body to kind of trick it into a little bit of dehydration. Okay. And, and something you mentioned there too is the... Uh, the supplement. So obviously if anybody follows a macro based approach, they understand this, but you do have to make sure that the supplements fit your macros as well. Right. Oh yeah. Cause like protein, all stuff, all that. I mean, I don't know what you use, like isopure or whatever to make sure it had less of less carbs or, or whatever, but you have to be cognizant of that when you try to fit it into your. Oh, for sure. Diet. And uh, the reason why I had protein was because I had such a, you know, high protein goal that I needed to hit. Okay. I mean, probably most people feel that way, but you actually burn more calories from just eating whole, real protein just from your body digesting it than having a protein shake. Really? Yeah. So, so, I mean, if I would say if this was a perfect, you know, science and this is all I did, Mm -hmm. I would probably stick to the whole foods, but because of, you know, you got to fit into your lifestyle and make it work. Protein yeah, sure. we didn't talk about a step for steroids, but steroids are <laughs> a huge fucking part of this. Is it not? It's a huge part of this sport. So again, I'm focused on like, if you're just trying to get into the sport and even for me doing two shows or even people, you know, the next level might be going to nationals and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I know the top pro levels do it. The people I surround myself around for this, again, it's bikini and figure, we're not doing anything like that. Okay. But some people take it way more serious or feel like they need to do that. 
I know it's a part of it, but the only reason I'm asking is if you if you do utilize, well, not even just steroids, right? If you just use like a testosterone replacement therapy or something like that, that's gonna in you know that's gonna factor into the way that you bloat and different things like that. Like you're gonna carry more water weight inherently because of testosterone or whatever it is you're doing. And so the only reason I'm asking is, do you think that the approach that you're giving right now would also be uh, comparable to the approach that somebody would take uh, if they were using any kind of ergogenic aid? Um, or would you not even know because you don't deal with it? I would say I, w- I wouldn't know for sure, mm-hmm. but I would say what, I'm, what I've done and what I like, am sharing about people getting into the first time. Yeah. Probably times the intensity by 10 for the people at the pro level. I mean, think about last year and more this year is more quality based, but I was, you know, if it fits your macro, I'm still measuring things. Yeah. People at that level know if chicken makes them bloat compared to, you know, ground turkey. Like they know the difference, how their body reacts to the smallest change in vegetables or they had a half a tablespoon more salt. Mm. So, I mean, I always say there's levels to this shit of when it comes to nutrition so like let's say there's five levels five is like you don't know shit you eat whatever you're Mm. inconsistent four is being like okay i got some structure in my plate in my life i eat five times a day and have you know no protein and my carbs in yeah three being um which i say this is kind of where i am in the off season three being okay i know what the amount of protein carbs and fat i should intake each day yep. it's going to be mixed in with some drinking and you know lifestyle, n- lifestyle and not maybe not as quality and then level two is i'm measuring out everything i'm trying to get as much quality in as i can i'm not drinking and i'd say that's where i was on my prep yep and then level one which i would say where the pros are is they're so dialed in to not only um timing but the smallest changes that they can they know their body so well that Mm. and they're so dialed in that that's but again that's really hard to maintain but that's why they're at the level they are sure okay cool so so you're at a deficit right if you need to lose weight which most people do you're at a deficit from the calories that you're intaking but the other part that's helping you burn more calories is the added cardio so you got to wear a heart rate monitor first and foremost. That's like a staple because mm-hmm. uh, you need to know how many calories you're burning, not only in your workout, which we'll get into, but in your cardio. Okay. So you'll see everybody on the Stairmaster yep. to do cardio. It's just one of the most efficient ways to do it. Such um, miserable. Oh yeah. I hate that fucking thing. <laughs> and the worst part is the more, the leaner you get and the better in shape you your cardiovascular gets from doing it, yeah. the harder it is to burn calories. Right, so you have to like up the ante. Yes, yeah. oh yeah. So I started off, my coach had me burning 100 extra calories after my workout. No problem, I was already, you know, not in that type of shape, had pounds to lose, so I was, could do it in 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Then about halfway through, we upped the ante, okay, burned 200 calories, I was in way better shape, took me 30 to 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. So that's five days a week. So that's a lot. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm thinking, just thinking of all the podcasts I listened to, yeah, all right. the things I did when I was. And so was let's talk there. about that. So the cardio. Uh, did you mess around at all with fasted cardio? I actually did not. Um, Can you just leave that cover off? Yeah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> so I don't have to edit squeak, everyone squeak, out. Squeak, squeak. <laughs> sorry. Um, so did you mess around with fasted cardio? I actually did not because I worked out in the morning. It was kind of hard to set that up. In my first prep, I was too new to do anything like that. In my second prep, I'm working, you know, more than full time on a corporate job and building a business. I'm fitting this in, so it was it would just be too overwhelming to do that. But I definitely think that's something that could definitely be played around with, and I might do that in the future. Okay. Yep. So you just put cardio in where you could get it in. Well, really, it was recommended to do it right after my workout because that would burn the most because my mm. heart rate was so high that yeah. I could get. The most out prolong there. that that caloric burning right okay exactly. and then uh what about hit versus steady state so i did hit you did yes so you did intervals yes okay um because so i could continue to get that burn long after yeah. and to make it the most efficient it just does burn more calories right right exactly okay yep so what did your intervals look like Sorry. Oh, no. Because um, I know people, it's like, okay, if you just go do cardio, they'll like put, uh, look it on the elliptical for 30 minutes. You know what I mean? And obviously, we recommend getting a coach. Even you are a coach and you still get a coach. Oh, in yeah, order for to do sure. This. So that's something. But but just to 
just to flush out the cardio piece for people. And, and if you're, you're listening to this and you might not even want to step on stage, you still want to burn max calories probably and look oh, the yeah. best you can. So, um, so yeah, what did your intervals look like? So the way it was prescribed to me was <laughs> level six on the Stairmaster mm-hmm. for, for 10 calories. Level 14 on the Stairmaster for 12 calories. Level 12 on the Stairmaster. And so that's what it looked like. So I started off at level 6, went to 14, dropped to 12, mm. 10, and then back up. So like undulated intensity, really. Right. Not start, stop. Exactly. Okay. Um, but the challenging part with that is if you're trying to look at your watch to see your calories. and your. So I just kind of made it one minute yep. each, each one, which made it a lot easier and simpler for me to do. Yep. And as I felt myself getting easier... I up the ante. Okay, now I'm going to start at 8. Okay. And instead of 14, I'm going to 16. And, um, I mean, I just got better and better at it. I remember last year, because I have never been good at endurance or um, having good, you know, cardiovascular or anything like that. But I've realized that it's not because... It's because I never trained for it right, right. <laughs> correctly. Okay. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll just never be good at this. Nope, this made me good at it. Because okay. I remember going into, dropping into a CrossFit when I was, um, I would say like the peak of my training. Yeah. And it was like a 25 minute workout and I crushed it. Mm-hmm. And I would never have crushed that before. And I remember the coach who knew me was like, what the hell? Where did that come from? And I was right. like, oh, well, I do this every day. So this is, I just keep going and I'm good. Right. Um, so I was super surprised by that. So um, I mean, that's one of those things that I can take back to CrossFit now when yeah. I do do CrossFit. If I want to train for a competition, 100%. okay, I know I can get on that Stairmaster and, and get where I need to be. Yeah. And I talk about that all the time, but having that baseline level of aerobic conditioning will allow you, even if you're a a weightlifter and it's like my plea to people even if you're a weightlifter like having that baseline aerobic conditioning will allow you to get more out of your uh, sets and reps deeper into your workout mm-hmm. you'll be able to you'll be able to carry more intensity through a longer duration of a workout yes couldn't agree with that more and so how long were your workouts so my workouts were about an hour i had a um a calorie goal for my workouts too okay and to get it in within an hour ideally 45 minutes so I would do my different um, sets and then in between I would be doing like plyos or like, um, what are they called? Skiers or um, squat jumps just to keep my heart rate up in between my lifts. Okay, cool. Yeah, because I mean, you're at a, you're at a deficit and you got to create that deficit between food and, and sure. what you're burning throughout the day. And I was so surprised at how much I lost because of how lean you have to get. I mean, I started my first show at 122 and I, I mean, I was fairly lean. I figured, oh, I could probably, you know, get down five pounds. We'll see. Mm-hmm. And I dropped 12 pounds between then and stage oh, stage damn. weight. And I was like, dang, this is, people can get, yeah can drop, right? right? Yeah. So, um, okay. so yeah, you got to create that deficit. Yeah. Um, and that's just, you know, that's a good thing for people, <laughs> no matter what your goals are. Like, you hear a lot of people that are like, oh, I'm a hard gainer. I just can't gain weight. It's like... No, you can gain weight. You literally are just not trying hard enough because you can do it. Just like you said, you can cut weight. You have a weight to cut. It oh, might yeah. not be easy. It might not even be healthy, <laughs> but you can fucking do it. So, like, that's just an excuse you got to take off the table. Oh, for sure. And to, um, I mean, that's why you got to, like, time your prep because I don't want to crash diet two weeks out. Right. And I want to maintain muscle and I wanted to do it in a healthy way. Sure. Um, so that's why you got to really plan for these things. And how healthy did you feel through the whole process? Oh, fine. Really? And yeah, for sure. And I know at different levels and different people, it's going to feel different from them. I had, um, you know, my CrossFit coach, he did one and he had a bad coach. Yeah. And he had them on like less, like half the calories that I was on. Oh, God. Right. And so. In training. In training, walking to no the carbs. gym every day. Oh, like all of this crazy stuff. Yeah. But for me, I had a good coach. And yeah, there were some times where I could feel my body just burning and like, oh, I'm a little hungry. Normally I would sit down and just eat because I want to, or like, no, I can't do that. But nothing where I was, I was definitely not starving myself in any means. I mean, I, the lowest I was at was 1600 calories, Okay. which that's a lot of food. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but the... Next biggest thing that people don't realize is the posing, which okay. I know we kind of brought up. Yep. I mean, 
it is so frustrating. <laughs> you know, my first posing class, I'm like, how do you squeeze this muscle but turn this way and activate, mm. you know, this lat? Um, are you familiar with the lat spread? I feel like it's a big thing for guys to the do. The pose? Like, just in general, spreading your lats. Oh, no. I probably couldn't do it effectively. So, yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, you can a little bit. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, okay. It's, I mean, it's totally different than you'd ever think, and it takes so much more energy than you ever think. I mean, an hour of posing where you're squeezing every muscle and trying to focus and all of that, like I'm sweating. After yeah. It. So what's interesting is you, when you are an athlete, you learn, well, hopefully you have a good coach and you learn how to engage different muscles through different movements. So when you're on the pull-up bar, like one of the first things I was taught is when you hang, you don't just hang from a pull-up bar like a uh, just piece of shit. You engage your lats, <laughs> right? And you get big and, and, uh, it's interesting to think like how that could maybe be uh, crossed over to and applied to this, right? Oh yeah, just body awareness in yeah, general. Yeah, body awareness, exactly. For sure, and activating certain muscles. I mean, activating my lats, mm -hmm. um, just like in the position for a snatch or something like that. Oh, that's how I activate it to hold the bar. Right. Like, yeah, definitely made some connections there. Okay, so yeah, you probably would have a little bit of an advantage coming from a more athletic background. Right, well, that, would, and then also coming from a cheer and dance background, mm. because you have to memorize a routine that you're doing on stage in Ooh. front of tons of people with light shining on you in little clear high heels. So that probably did help for this. Oh, for sure, because that's when a lot of these girls are coming from, maybe they're soccer players or something like that, and getting them to turn it on on the stage. I mean, not only do you have to move your body in these weird ways, in these little clear heels, but your face has to sell it too. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, if you're the judge and you're looking up there. You look like you're taking a dump. If, yes. <laughs> well, you're squeezing like, everything. Okay. They could have the best body in the world. Like, I just can't even look at yeah. them because this, <laughs> this is too much. So you got to right. sell it too. Right, right. Which that's why I say posing is so important, which I would have never guessed. And, um, I mean, we, we all know that these Instagram girls where you didn't just take that photo you right. know it's like you you got to know how to position your body yeah. so that you look good i mm -hmm. mean it's just the way it is and the same can be applied to when you're on stage yeah instagram models are people too i get it yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay. all right so uh when it comes to choreographing a routine are you do you make that up no get a coach <laughs> okay. okay but but you have the ability to make it up. So between you and your coach, you're making something up. It's not something standardized that everybody does. Oh, yeah. Okay. Correct. I mean, there's standard things like you want to show like front or back, but your coach will know like, okay, we want to show your what you've got working, you know, what you've got going on right. that's good that the judges, you know, would like. So, um, yeah, I mean, you got to hit the right angles for what you about, and stuff like that. Okay, and what about music? Are you picking your own music? No, they play music. I don't even know what they're playing. It's like pop, hip-hop exciting really? music on there. Yeah, but it's just on like, not repeat, but it's just like for the whole auditorium so people don't fall asleep. So is that weird though? Because you're trying to choreograph a routine not to music. So like if, if beats are getting hit at different times and you're moving at different times, is that not weird? No, it's a little different. Whereas like dance or cheer, you're like... On a count like five, six, seven, mm -hmm. eight. It's not necessarily like that when I say routine. It's oh. just like you're going to, you know, step up here. You're going to swing your arms like this. You're going to arch your back. You know, you're going to okay. pull your lats out. And you're going to look. Even down to the eyes. Like my coach had me, I want you to do this with your eyes. And like kind of look at them and look up. And I'm like, really? okay, this is like down to the details. Yeah, okay. Like it's, yeah. And then you come out after. So you do your little routine. And it's like 30 seconds long. And then you come out in what they call comparison poses. And this is for all classes. You stand next to, I don't know, four or five people. Yep. And you this is standard. So you hit your front pose so they can compare everybody the same way. And then you turn to the side and the back so they can compare everybody. Okay. Cool. So that is standard. Okay. Yep. And then the way they do it is they have a morning show and a night show. So in the morning show... They'll call you out, you do a routine, then you do comparisons, and they say, okay, which is generally the top five, you, 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 come out, and then um, they compare you, and then you turn around, and then you go off stage. So I'm like, wait, I did all this work for only like two minutes on stage? Like, I'm going to get back out there, and I'm right. like, you look at me, you look at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, the judges are doing this all day long. Like, sometimes you can see a judge, like, 
is like looking over, you know, behind them. And I'm like, no, no, no. Like, yeah. I, eyes up here. I put too much work in for this. Oh, damn. Yeah, I know. I so then you come back from the night show and you do that again. And there's then when they like award you whatever place you get. But you kind of have an idea from the morning show. Okay. And what is it like in between those? Because are you eating or? Yeah. On, on game day, I call it. Um, You're still, you're eating normal. The only difference is the water. You're not drinking water. Yeah. Well, eat sips. Wait, but sips what do you mean needed. eating normal? Eating normal as in like the week of prep. So like I talked about. Um, what you would have eaten the day before. Okay. Right. Exactly so you're not like getting that. Denny's. Got it. Yeah. No. Okay. No Denny's yet. But that's why I say, I mean, posing is so important. Um, and that gets into weight training. So mm. it's still important, but I, I wouldn't consider it as important as... The nutrition, the cardio, and the posing. Because all the training in the world, you you know, it's pretty commonly known now. You can't out-train a bad diet. Exactly. Right? And Okay. Cool. Exactly. And if you walk up there and you're doing the robot and you look dumb, I'm going to be like, what the fuck is this guy? <laughs> yeah, I can't okay. even. They might laugh. So, yeah, so that makes sense. Those two are more important. Right. Okay. Yep. And so for the training, I would say um, you got to have some type of plan. Like for me, I knew I needed to work the shoulders, um, legs, and glutes just because of the class I was in and the body I was going in with. Mm-hmm. Other people might be different. Um, like we talked about, I had to wear a heart rate monitor because I had to have a certain calorie goal mm-hmm. during my workout. And also, um, because I wasn't getting there, I had to include plyo stuff in between, like squat jumps in between lifting and stuff like that. Okay. Same thing. The more in shape I got, the harder it was to get to that calorie goal and still remain within the 45 minutes hour. Mm. So it's a, it's a mind fuck. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, so... You're doing that for an hour of a day. You're doing um, the cardio for, an, you know, let's call it 30 minutes a day. Mm-hmm. You have posing practice once a week, but you need to practice every day. You need to have those heels on every day and get used to wearing those mm-hmm. on stage. Did you wear them around the house? Like- oh, yeah. I'd be cooking dinner. Yeah. <laughs> My roommates would come home and be like, does, does Drake live here? What's, go- what's going on? <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> um, but, yeah. So, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty big commitment. To stay consistent with all of that mm-hmm. and make sure you fit all of that in every day. Interesting. Okay. And guys will go barefoot, right? Guys go barefoot. Yeah. Okay. They don't have to wear the heels. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Unless they want to. <laughs> hey, the, right. There's something for everybody. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the training then. Oh, one quick thing about the, the nutrition. Did you use diuretics? No, I did not. Okay. People do. In, I would say even at the amateur level, people do. Mm-hmm. But I didn't. I didn't want to mess with that. Like, I felt like I could get to where I wanted to be without having to do that. Yeah, and that's an interesting thing. That's one of the arguments for um, why, you know, physique and bodybuilding might not be super healthy because those diuretics really play a toll on your, your organs and stuff like that, so. Yeah, I mean, you can take it to, like, we talked about the extreme of steroids and all of that. Yeah. It just depends. The diuretics on aren't steroids. Like, that's an over-the-counter thing. Yeah, yeah, but do. I'm just saying, like, you can do that or you can do other things or take it, you know, to the extreme. Right. It's kind of how you want to go okay. into it. Okay, and then so moving on into the training, you're training an hour a day, what do you, five days a week? or Five days a week. Okay, and cardio five? Yep. Okay, and body splits, like how, what's pretty standard? Is it the two body parts a day or? So for me, I mean, everyone's going to be different, but for me, I did booty three days a week. Just, and just butt. Just butt. Okay. Just butt. I threw in some legs in there. Are we talking squat? Are we talking deadlift? What are we talking for butt? We're talking hip thrust. Yeah. <laughs> Symptom. A yeah. lot, a lot of hip thrust. Yeah. Um, a lot of straight leg deadlifts. Okay. A lot of weird stuff that you've never even seen before. Okay. But uh, the place I went to, Body University, I mean, she is like queen booty. Okay. And she makes up stuff. And I, at one point, I'm like up against the wall. I have a sliding thing on my heel, and I'm pushing it against the glass wall, and I, it's burning so bad, and I look so ridiculous <laughs> that I, I'm so glad I'm not at 24 Fitness right now doing this. God damn. <laughs> okay, so you did B hole three days a week. Yeah. <laughs> with some legs in there. Okay. Um, and then shoulders two days a week. With okay. some um, arms and back in there too. Okay. But if you think about it, at least for the two classes that I was in, you've got to have the shoulders just create so much of that like shape for your body. Mm-hmm. Like if you think, you know, goes out and then you need small waist and then come in with the booty and the legs. Okay. Like that's just the the appealing look that you're but going for. You want for. that hourglass look. Right. right. Okay. Exactly. Okay. 
And surprisingly, like, I would never train shoulders before. Like, being a female, I'd be like, oh, my God. Right. I don't want to show big shoulders. Now I'm like, give me the biggest <laughs> shoulders. <laughs> because, I mean, they create that look, and they also make your arms look smaller. Like, things that you would never even think of. Yeah. And they have, you know, they create the lines and the definitions on your arms, so. Well, and you're actually a good example of this, and maybe it's been disproved a little bit, and people are starting to uh, wake up to the fact that, like, a lot of girls, you know, they have that feeling of like, I don't want to train body parts because I don't want to get big. And it's like, think about you train shoulders twice a week for your entire prep, mm-hmm. you know, and you don't, walking around the street, you don't look like somebody that's like overly jacked or anything yeah. like that. So Yeah, that's the hardest thing trying to explain to people yeah. because um, like you're literally creating the shape of your body. Yeah. Like maybe some girls don't need shoulders, right? But you're creating the shape of your body by building muscles here, decre- you know, trying to get smaller here. Yeah. You're not necessarily just, oh, I'm building all my muscles really big. Right. Right? So w- that's another way to look at it. Yeah, for sure. What is your Instagram so people can go look at you? It is Jenny from the Blake. And so that's J-E-N-N-Y-F-R-M-D-A-B-L-A-K-E. Okay, perfect. Yep. So girls can know what we're talking about. I think it'll make sense if they look at you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. All right, so we're talking... Uh, Booty, shoulders, um, and you did uh, like arms once a week? Yeah, yep, okay. threw in some arms and back. But again, I have a base from CrossFit. Like, yep. I had pretty solid abs. Um, back is just pretty solid, just the way I was built in because of CrossFit. Yep. Um, and again, arms. I have pretty solid triceps, so actually my coach was like, hey, don't do triceps. We actually want that to decrease a little because mm-hmm. we want the shoulders to be bigger and the arms to look smaller. Like, obviously, you still want to define, but again, just building that shape. Damn, okay. Yeah, and so it's so weird because I never would have known any of this stuff or right. applying it to my body and the different little techniques like that. Hmm, okay. And you said, how, how much did you do abs? How m- oh... Because people usually do them, like, every day. No. Like. I did it probably... Ideally, I would would have done it twice a week for 15 to 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably did it maybe a little less than that. But again, I, abs have always been my strength for me. Yep. Um, so I didn't need to spend more time on that. I needed to spend more time on the booty. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Going back to the booty yeah. and, um, the hamstring and the glute tie-in, which is that little area between your hamstrings and your glutes. Yep. That's a big the deal. Little, like divot right there. Yep. That yep. divot. That's a big deal. Okay. So really focusing on all of those exercises. Okay. To target that area. And when you trained, um, your abs, you're, you're not doing like core movements, you're doing a lot of crunching movements, right? Because you're trying to pronounce those muscles more than you are trying to build like a really strong core. Right. Yeah, I would say yes, but I found for me that uh, dynamic movements show abs for me mm. the best. And so I tried to do dynamic ab movements. So I'm trying to think of examples. Um, like tuck jumps, yep. like jumping up and tucking. Really? Or... Um, I'm not sure if you've heard of a reverse burpee, but uh-huh. like things like that where you're like moving your whole body and you're jumping and things like that. Okay. And I learned that from, so I was a cheerleader my whole life. So with gymnastics, lots of dynamic movements. Yep. Um, and so I feel like I owe a lot of that to my abs. Um, but also I was on a bike, like a dirt bike my whole life. So like holding, you know, like holding the bike up and moving around on top of the bike and engaging my abs. So I feel like a combination of those two is what I tried to implement okay. um, when I was doing ab work. And when we, you and I did an episode with Brian Borstein, we talked a little bit about the crossroads of CrossFit and bodybuilding and how there's a lot of CrossFit movements that could be used to enhance a bodybuilding career, such as muscle snatches, things like that. Mm-hmm. Did you use any of those uh, pseudo CrossFit movements? With your background or no? Yeah. I did a lot of um, shoulder presses. Mm-hmm. So like strict presses. Yeah. Um, a lot of that. Um, what about handstand push-ups? I, I did, did such a pump from those things. Yes. Okay. I did some handstand push-ups. I'm trying to think what else. Um, deadlifts, sure. squats, yeah. um, things like that. I didn't want to do too much of the snatch and the clean because that really engages your, um, why can't I think of what this is called? Your traps. Yeah. Um, and you don't want traps on stage. Really? Yeah. When I first started, um, when I first started doing bodybuilding workouts, 
um, my coach was like, stop engaging your traps. Like, you need oh, to learn to stop weird. engaging your traps. Yeah. yeah, super weird. So I wanted to kind of stay away from those. Okay. Um, I did a lot of butterfly pull-ups because I thought that would get my lats and my back and still, you know, dynamic movements with the abs. Yep. Um, so I did a lot of that. So And I like CrossFit, so I just wanted to apply it. Yeah. So. Because I enjoyed it. Sure. I have uh, friends that are... Well, I had a friend that was a really, like, pretty high-level CrossFitter. You know, top 50 in the region type. And he did a bodybuilding competition. And when I talked to him about it, because I was considering it at the same time, he said, wait until you no longer want to do CrossFit. Cause, and it might just have been his prep or, or his coach or his experience. But, you know, he was like, when I came back to CrossFit, it was so fucking difficult. Like, for whatever reason, he had just lost so much fitness in the whole prep phase and was that has that been your experience or have you not even gone back oh yeah no I went back after my first show and I was like this is so much harder because you do you lose strength yeah. because that's not the focus anymore right, of course. and you're dieting down so you're not as big yep. you can't push around more weight yep. um I mean my cardio was awesome but mm -hmm. as far as the lifting I mean you're not doing the techniques of the lifting so yeah it was super hard coming back that's yep. for sure you have less fat to protect your joints and things like that yeah that all matters all of that yeah, yeah. for okay. sure okay cool what else are we missing anything from the prep process game day oh okay so, <laughs> you've done all this work you wake up game day yeah so like i said you want to wait until to make sure you're ready and then two weeks out kind of sign up for it do and they fill up fast though? Like, can you wait too? No, they'll take your money. They'll, okay. They'll take your money. They they maybe let the last person in like three days before. So you have a competition in mind. Yeah, you. You pick don't want to sign up until you feel like you the prep worked and you're ready. Yeah, I mean, there's okay. competitions like every month. So if the coach is like, well, oh, you're here, not right. here, that's true. That's true. You could travel, I guess, to different right. areas. Well, we have a lot of listeners in Nebraska for some reason. So <laughs> don't know about Nebraska. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Um, but, um, if you're not ready, you can push yeah. it back. Okay. Um, but so, yeah, and we'll get into how much all this costs in a, in a little bit because you'll, might be surprised by that too. Okay. So, yeah, so you, not only do you have to do all of the three things we mentioned, like the nutrition, cardio, the posing, the weightlifting, but you got to prep for game day. So you got to get your tanning appointment. <laughs> sure. And you've got to get bikinis in which each, um class requires a different bikini or you know swimsuit or little tiny panties for the guys okay but uh, a speedo right like speedo I, yeah that's what i it's, it's a speedo yeah but so i don't think you could just go to walmart and get a speedo i think it's got to be pretty um, well i don't think they sell speedos but <laughs> 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 but you can just go to amazon and uh like so i have an american flag speedo i can wear that uh, they might advise you not to if you just bedazzle it though if you put some little sparkles yeah, on like it. Yeah, like glitter or... Hey, you can try it. Let's see, okay. let's see how you do. All right. um, you've got to get a hair appointment, makeup appointment, especially for the girls. Okay. Um, tanning. Tanning. So, the night before... Yep. You go into this little tanning magician, and there's a ton of other people in there. I mean, it's like an assembly line. Okay. You get naked. I mean, it's a free-for-all. You get naked... Everybody else is in there with you. Everyone else is in there with you. I mean, they try to like, okay, here, you're just in this chick. station. Just no, guys are in there too. Everybody's naked. Everyone's naked. Holy I mean, shit. they try Bunch to. Bunch of good-looking like... humans all <laughs> naked getting sprayed down. This it's is a it's freak literally show. <laughs> the strangest thing. Okay. And so I go back to the area where she's spraying, and again, they let other naked. people in there. Did Aaron go in there with you? No, okay. I mean, the, this girl's doing it in her apartment. I mean, she just got it set up when the tell you it's like an assembly line. So she sprays you down. Yeah. I mean, you're like spreading your butt cheeks so she can get in get there. The fuck out of here. Okay. <laughs> and she's like, all right, bend over. All right. What? So now, here's the thing. After she sprays you down, yeah. you can't stand back up. So you're kind of bent down at a 45 degree angle. You can't put your arms down because the spray tan's got to dry. Yeah. So your arms are up. So then you go into station one and you hold it there for 10 minutes. And I'm like, this is not what I want to be doing right now. Oh, my God. And everybody else is in there. I mean, they set up, like, little tents. But, I mean, when you got to go in between the tents, it's yeah. like, Ooh, whatever. whatever. Yeah, okay. Um, I mean, you're about to be on stage the next day and next to nothing. Like, yeah. at this point, you're like, look at me. I worked my ass off. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, that's the first tent, all yeah. right? Then you go into the second tent where you just face the other way. And you're still holding that position. Bent over, 45-degree angle. 
your arms are up, try not to sweat because you don't want your tan to be ruined. Right. So then the third tent, someone comes over and they powder you. Again, you're naked. Powder you in all like the sweaty area and the creases. You put on some loose clothing. <laughs> okay. You don't go anywhere except home because at this point you're already starting to look a little crazy. Yeah. Especially because she doesn't do your face. So your body's like half black and then your face is just normal. Okay. Me being a ginger, you can imagine what that looks like. Sure. <laughs> now, you are of ginger descent. If somebody is not, <laughs> if somebody's darker, do they go through the same stages? Is yes. That... Okay. And actually, Why? I asked a black guy at the last competition like if he has to get spray tan. Mm-hmm. My boyfriend was so embarrassed because he's standing right next to me. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, yeah, they do. Just to create that, um, I don't know, the even skin tone. And the whole point of the spray tan is when you're on stage, the lights completely wash you out. Mm-hmm. And I think everyone knows, like, if you're darker, you look skinnier. And it kind of shows a little more of the definition. And then with the lights washing you out, it just looks a lot better. Okay. So, yeah, you go home. You try not to touch anything. <laughs> Your bed might get a little um, spray tan on it, yeah. but it is what it is because the next morning you wake up and you go back and get resprayed. The whole process again? Hold up. Let me tell you the craziest part. <laughs> okay. So the first time I went through this, I was already like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> she, on the way out, she hands me a little cup. She, All right, and here's your pee cup. I was like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> so you have to pee in a cup. If you're female. Why? You have to pee in the cup. So that way there's no chance of you like, be splashing it and getting back on your like legs or anything or on your booty or it dripping down your leg because then it'll wipe the spray tan off. So you got to pee in the cup for the next 24 at least hours. Whoa. <laughs> so you literally just have to... Did anyone prepare you for this? No. It's good that we're preparing other people for <laughs> yeah, this because I, I would be like, where the fuck? No way. I'm not doing this. <laughs> You're not doing this. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, the, luckily that's why I'm saying you got to know somebody who's in the industry yeah. or um, is a coach because yeah, the team I was working with, they prepare you for all that and had the whole little sheet gotcha. and all of that. But, okay. But I think I must have forgotten about that point because I was like, oh, okay, all right, all right. But anyway, you go back the next morning and you get your final spray tan coat. You get yeah. your hair done, your makeup done, which is intense. Do they have people doing these or you bring your own person? They do have like recommended people, but um, again, the company group I was with, they have one person they recommend who did okay. all of our makeup. Okay. Yep. So then you get over there and um, you get your bikini on, your heels on, and there's really, there's not a lot of structure. Like there's a morning show and a night show. You know the order of the classes, but that's it. So you got to be watching. You got to be ready to go mm. because about 45 minutes before you go on, you get glazed. Okay. So what that is, <laughs> is you get glazed up like a donut and somebody comes on and they're just spraying all this stuff on you and wiping you down so you look super shiny uh-huh. and um, glazed up like a donut. And then you go backstage where everyone's pumping up, right? So there's no weights allowed backstage, but you've what? got like bands. Um, I don't know why they don't have weights. I huh. feel Maybe like people I... get hurt or it seems dumb. Um, maybe to just pump. too much of annoyance to, with all the weights. I don't know, but is it hard to get a pump and not sweat? I mean, yeah, because that's weird, right? Because if you sweat, it's gonna run your streak yourself. At this point, it's dry. Okay, so a little sweat's fine. Um, so, okay. so you just do it. You do like curls with bands and exactly like um. I would try to do like three sets of 30, five sets of 30, um, especially on the shoulders, on the booty. Um, like the front delts and things like that but everyone's back there doing the same thing okay. and um you also have some type of candy or um carbs okay so that way it's rushing you know swing. makes you full right makes your yep. muscles look full exactly yep. um because so, they're probably pretty flat looking at this point exactly yeah. and Ali, like this time oh i forgot to mention in the nutrition part um i did have carb ups okay to help with that so you know one day every two weeks i get throwing a ton of carbs at me to help keep me full like and kind of refeed, refeed me. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, sometimes, I think two days before I had to carb up just so I could look a little more full, but that's going to be case by case. Okay. So you're backstage, you're eating gummy bears, you're pumping up. Again, my first show, I was like, what in the world? What am I doing right. here? This is insane. And then some guy walks by and I'm like, hey, hey, do I know you from somewhere? I'm like, dude, you work with me. 
Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And we're like, like a co-worker, just yeah. bodybuilding yep. on the weekends? Nice. Yep. And I was like, oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. Damn. So then you go up on stage and kind of like I mentioned, you're your posing routine. Yep. And then you come off and you're, again, just sipping on water or you have your normal lunch for that week. And then you come back for the finals and you get your trophy and then you come off and they have a cake for you, which is pretty cool. That's cool. And then, I mean, at this point, I mean, I started at 6 a.m. and it got out of there at 10 30 p.m god damn that's a long day so it's a long day so i would like if you have family coming or sig figs coming to support maybe just come to one show mm. made that mistake the first go around having them like sit there all day with you and yeah. all day yeah and um and like the smell of spray tan everyone's in like these little outfits um you know, walking around and you're like, it's pretty ridiculous. But yeah. It's a whole other world. But at the same time, you're, you can look around at everyone and be like, I know the effort and dedication that you just put in and I respect you. Yeah. Sure. So everyone's like, at this point is on like, when you're backstage, there's no like, oh, I'm going to beat that girl or anything like that. Like everyone's like, dude, nice work. Like mm, you look awesome. Because cool. even if like placing, obviously you want to do the best, but even without that, like, think about what you just accomplished, and you're probably in the best um, aesthetic shape, you know, that you've ever been yeah. in. That Which you're has so, to be enough. You're yeah. so proud of that. You're so excited about that, and sharing that with other people is, I would say, more almost more rewarding than actually like, how you're placing. Yeah. Um, but again, that's, I mean, competition, competition, too. Sure. So then right when it's over, you eat your cake, and then, so uh, we just had Danny Reardon on, who's an Olympia uh, competitor. She took second in the Olympia last year, six The little monster? Yeah. Yeah, it started following her. Yeah, like, she's... This girl's badass. Yeah, she's super awesome. Yeah. Um, so she said after stages, one of her one of her weaknesses has been just like eating everything in sight. Um, but you have a, there's a way to do it correctly, right? That. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, the first 24 hours, I gave myself some leeway because, like, look what yeah. I just did. Like, when we went to Denny's because that was the only thing I opened. Yeah. <laughs> Had yeah. my cookies and all of that. Um, but reverse dieting afterwards is so important, which okay. coaches told me that my first go around. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And so after first competition, I just kind of did whatever I wanted, mm-hmm. right? I would put myself in that four to five category that we talked about earlier where – wasn't really, wasn't tracking anything at all. Like maybe had some structure, but you know, lots of food one day, not enough food the other day, like in, being super inconsistent. And, um, and then I started, you know, my, I had other priorities, like work was more of my focus. So, um, wasn't probably training enough and cardio definitely were, wasn't doing that enough. And so the next go around, uh, I could tell it was a lot harder mm. to get back to where I wanted to be okay. because I hadn't reverse diet. So this go around, made sure I did it. So what you do is, <laughs> it's kind of like you're like, oh yes, I'm done. You know, I'm off that super strict diet, and then starting at least by Tuesday, yeah. you're right back on it. And maybe not as strict as the last week, but you're still tracking, you know, your macros or whatever food that you were consistently eating before and the amounts. Mm-hmm. And you're still doing the cardio, and then you slowly each week increase more food and decrease the cardio. The main thing is being consistent. Okay. Yeah, being consistent with it and actually... um, And that'll keep you just from like piling on a bunch of shitty weight. Exactly. Because think about it, your body has been, you know, you're cutting. And Mm -hmm. so if you give your body a bunch of food and just keep throwing it at it where it's not used to processing that much or it's just going to hold on to it and be like, oh, yes, I don't know if you're going to restrict me again. Yeah. Um, So it's doing it in a steady, slow way. Yep. So that would actually be good, probably advice for anybody because I cut down for powerlifting competition... And I cut down from, I cut down like a lot. And I basically did a crash diet because I only had two weeks to get there. Mm-hmm. And I went from like 216 to 198 in two weeks. And then, but I actually was okay. Like I weighed in and then I ate a huge burrito. Yeah. And then my numbers were pretty good. Like I hit really yeah, close fine. to maximum. But I had jumped right back up to like 220 within like a week or so. Because yeah. I was like, oh, fuck it, I'm done. And I just started eating. So that might even be a, a really good move for, for anybody that cuts weight in any fashion or respect right oh for sure not even not only in that but i have a lot of just lifestyle nutrition clients Mm -hmm. where they're just not eating enough you know it it could be just eating junk and not enough solid food and still they're just not eating enough in total and so i've got to work with them and reverse diet them up so that way their body's used to getting more and more and more food over weeks and then we can start 
decreasing or you know adding in maybe some cardio or something like that so their body can actually let go of what it's put on Mm. because it knows that it's not going to be restricted it's going to be getting enough nutrients in so that goes for yeah anything okay cool so reverse diet reverse diet is huge and then um once you you also want to build yourself up to a certain amount of calories because then you'll go into improvement season or off season if you do want to do another one or you're just like okay now i know how to do this like let's dial in a little more. So like for me right now, like I know I still need to define my shoulders more in the booty and the legs, like different areas, like hamstrings, stuff like that. So I'm lifting heavier and I'm eating more so that way I can make it all go to the right place. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the next step is what do you want to do next? You know, how can you improve from that last show? Yeah. Um, kind of map out what your training's going to look like to get you there. Okay. And some people call it off season. I like the idea of improvement season. Mm. Um, but you still, you know, you want to be consistent so that way when you. It's go a good mental distinction because if you're talking about off season, you're talking about eating some bullshit. If you're talking about <laughs> improvement season, you're like, okay, what do I need to be eating to improve? That's actually a really good idea. Yep, I like that. Yep, and you know, it, kind of going back to those five levels of nutrition. Um, yes, I dropped myself down a level, so I'm not measuring out everything. But I still, you know, I know what I need to eat. I know I need a certain, this certain amount of protein or this certain amount of carbs. I know mm-hmm. I need to stack it, you know, around my workout if I want to get the benefit and grow how I want to grow and where. Is that a Jenny Blake original, improvement season? Improvement season. It's not. Um, I think some girls at the gym I was going to, someone said it and I was like, I love that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. Cool. All right. So heading into improvement season. Right now you're in improvement season. Are you going to do another show or are you going to do something else? So, yes, I want to do another show, but as we just talked about, I mean, this is three months of very, like, committed time period. Yep. So, you know, vacations, you gotta, you don't want to be on prep during a vacation. You know, I have good friends' weddings that are coming up. You don't want to be on prep during your best friend's wedding. Mm-hmm. So, you got to find that right timing, and that's what I'm looking for next year. Okay. And then also, I want enough time so I can make improvements. Because um, now that I've done two shows, I've got an idea of... Um, you know, how it all works. I think I improved from my last show, but now I'm like, okay, now I, I want to really improve and I want to really bring a, a good package to the stage. Um, so I want to make sure I'm improving. I want to make sure there's a good time frame when I can do it next year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, we'll go from there. And, you know, I'm building building a business. I'm working more than full time. Um, yeah. And then training on top of this, it's a lot. So I've got to make sure I can prioritize it um, when I do Hmm. go into it. The last aspect that I wanted to touch on, because I think this is something that I I would have a hard time with, is the psychological aspect. Mm -hmm. So you put all of your work and dedication, and I've talked about this on multiple shows, but it's good to hear from someone that's really been in the trenches. Mm -hmm. You put all of your work and dedication into looking good on stage, and then you get on stage. Did it feel subjective? I love this question. Because... If you look at it from an outsider, yeah, it's, just, it's subjective, right? You're going up there and they're judging you. Oh, I like shoulders better. I like, you exactly. know, booty better or whatever. I would say in general, you can tell who, you know, you can tell. Yep. It, it comes down to those, you know, those close, like, oh, they look very similar, but this, but that type. Um, so, yeah, some of it is subjective, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but to me, like, I don't look in the mirror and say, oh, my gosh, like, my, my abs aren't tight enough. Or, oh my gosh, like, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. This yeah. isn't right. To me, it's more of a, this is fun. I can, I get to control how my body shapes. Yeah. And I enjoy training. Like, I love being at the gym. I love that endorphin high. I love challenging myself when it comes to the nutrition. Like, oh, you don't think I can be this strict? Like, yes. Yes, I can. And I'm going to do great yeah. at it. Like, right. I, that's just how my mindset is and it's not I'm not doing it from a place of I'm not good enough I need to look better I'm coming from a place of I love this shit and I have control of it Mm. and this is like what I enjoy doing and I get the benefits of yeah looking better too right um but I mean coming like anybody else might have the same feeling too where it's like I could stop doing the competition and like I feel like I look fine like it's not Yes, you look better, but that's not what it's all about. Like, I love the posing part of it. I love being on stage. Like, Mm. for me, it's a place where I can compete, and I like to compete, um, that I can really get into it. Sure. That makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Anything else we missed about the process? 
Oh, man. Um, I don't know. We talked. Oh, the cost. Oh, yeah. How much? It. How much you pay for all this? Oh, money? boy. All right. So, so think about it. You're not good enough. You've got this. <laughs> <laughs> no. And well, I want to come back to that, too, yeah. because um, so many people will joke on this. Yeah. on this whole industry and I get it like again from an outsider perspective it's oh you're just going up there so they can judge you by the way you look right but at the same time like it's you're putting so much work and so much dedication into it that it's more of like you got to respect the people that are doing it um in like I don't know like I've heard people say that oh it's like a joke or oh I, I hate that it's stupid it's like all right, try to do it. Like, right. let's see how far you get with the right, nutrition right. and then you're on yeah. top of it and stuff like that. And I mean, I think it definitely, anybody can do it, but it's just going to take a lot of like mental Fortitude. strength and yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, like people can say it's subjective, it's this and that. I mean, there's going to be pros and cons about any sport, like CrossFit, like people have this, like, of course. you know, pros and cons about that, but it's like, yeah. I don't know, you have to have respect for the people that do it. For sure. And I think at the end of the day, if you like doing it, you like the result. If you think that you gave the best that you could have, that's all that you could ask for, right? And you have to be happy with that. And if you derive enjoyment from it, then who the hell is anybody else to tell you anything different, you know? Oh, for sure. So for how sure. much do you pay for all this? All right, so we've got the training costs. Yeah. Um, we've got the, I did that for like three months. We've got the nutrition costs for another three months. But you're going to eat anyway. I mean, is it more expensive? No, than... I'm paying for a coach. Oh, okay. A yeah. nutritionist. Okay. Yeah, I actually probably decreased what I was actually spending on food because I was so dialed in and I wasn't eating now and drinking and stuff like that. Sure. But, I mean, that's minimal. Coach, though. Okay. Coach, um, sign up for the competition, which, you, of course, you've got to get your annual card and you've got to get your um, the, your registration. I did two classes, so that was around $500 there. So it's like 250 bucks per... Uh, 150 per comp and then another 150 for, um, the annual fee. Okay. So it's um, pretty standard to like a marathon or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, training, nutritionist, like, I think it's like 250 a month. Mm -hmm. Um, the training like 250 a month. Jesus. And then you've got the tanning, which is another hundred bucks, um, uh, makeup, another hundred bucks per round. Or total. total. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then the makeup, which is 80 bucks. Um, oh, man, I feel like I'm missing stuff. Well, what what about the bikini there? or whatever? Oh, yes. Bikinis are freaking expensive. Yeah. They're all bedazzled. And you can buy one, but I definitely suggest either renting one from somebody who's at your, you know, in your gym network or um, coaches network, which is what I did. Um, or you can rent them from official places. So that was, they were 150, mm -hmm. around 150. To rent? Yeah, to rent. A the actual suits the can be anywhere from 500 to two grand. People God spend on these. Damn Bedazzled it. little <laughs> tiny. I'm going to bedazzle pieces. my own. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and, oh, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Um, but I mean, all of that is close to two to three grand you're looking at. Five. I didn't add up, but I feel like one grand is what I got. Five hundred just for registering. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, what's you said two fifty each for training and nutrition? So yeah, that's per a month. Thousand. Per month. Oh, and you did it for three. Six, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. God damn. So yeah. You are like so a that's thousand like bucks, three thousand. Fourteen hundred with nutrition and training plus the five hundred, so we're up to two grand plus the. Oh, you got to get pictures too. You gotta yeah. get the official stage pictures. That's another hundred bucks that you buy from the competition, right? Okay, and right. then also what you did, and I think a lot of people do is they kind of book a photo shoot because you're in the best shape of your life, aesthetics wise. So a lot of yeah. people like to get capture that when they're yeah. not all spray tan and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, the weekend before I did a photo shoot, um, so that can range from five hundred to yeah, grand, however you know. God. So yeah, but again, so. What I said earlier is people only do these a couple times a year because of those reasons. Well, because of cost, but then also because of how much time it takes to do this. Yeah. Um, and again, it's not something you just want to sign up for and wing. Right. Like, you just can't really do that. Like, you can. Damn. Like, I have with a lot of other things. Yeah. <laughs> well, and for that cost commitment... Exactly. That that requires that you put in the time and the work. And that's actually a good thing about having a barrier to entry high like that. You know, I paid just to register for that 200 miler, I paid a thousand bucks. Oh, know? wow. So the whole trip was like three grand or yeah. more. I was not going to blow that off. You yeah. know? So. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I think setting a date 
that totally, you know, we talked about mindset, yeah. that switches your mind. Like, oh, I've got this date. Like, anytime you have that moment of weakness, you got that date, mm-hmm. got that date, or you visualize yourself on stage or, you know, during that time, and it helps so much. Nice. Because I know a lot of people, and I was this way too, where I was like, oh, I just want to do everything, but I just don't want to compete. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, having that actual yeah, date just takes it to Yeah, forces a next level, level of commitment, yeah. Yeah, exactly. and I didn't realize how much I would like the posing in the stage time. <laughs> <laughs> you just stay out there. You're like, get off stage. You're done here. Come You're on, like, no, move no, on. No. <laughs> Excuse okay. me, judge on the left is not looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, awesome. That's good. I think for anybody that, that is listening to this, say I'm – I'm no, I mean, I didn't know. I thought I knew, and I knew nothing. So it was actually really informative for me as well. So hopefully people that are considering, um, you know, trying this out as an endeavor got a lot of info and have a good place to start. And then, you know, people that are going to stick with CrossFit or with powerlifting, there's a lot of, I think, nuggets in here that you could apply, which is always my favorite part of uh, the active lifestyle in general is all the different crossover um, applications that you get from one modality to the other. Oh, for sure. I mean, muscle engagement, everything, all of this stuff, and vice versa. There's stuff that I could take from CrossFit that I could apply while I was training for, sure. for this show too. So, yeah. Perfect. Well, thanks for being on and uh, sharing your journey with us. Of course. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay, perfect. And in the spirit of uh, Lionheart Radio, the way that we do every show is we end with a Lionheart kicker. And the kicker is based on advice. So obviously in this scenario, we'll apply it to uh, what we've been talking about in the prep process and stepping on stage. So if you could give advice, uh, and it were guaranteed that every single person that wanted to step on stage would hear it, <laughs> and it would be translated into every language, what would you tell people? Okay, this is if you want to step on stage, but it can definitely be taken broader than that. Just because you are born a certain way, you're in a certain situation, or you have certain genetics, is not who you are for the rest of your life. So you talked about earlier someone being a hard gainer. Mm -hmm. Someone told me once that, oh, you're a hard gainer, a coach said. And I'm like, okay, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. That doesn't matter. I'm gonna figure out how to get where I wanna where I want to be. Mm -hmm. I'll research maybe a different path than other people have to take, but I'm going to get there. And that can be applied to, I mean, public speaking. Yeah. You know that English is not my thing. (laughs) Right. In second grade, my parents tried to put me on like speech therapy. Yeah. Right. But I'm like, I want to be a good public speaker. All right. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to do some research. I'm going to, I'm in clubs now. I'm in Toastmaster. I got, I won best speaker in Toastmaster last week. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And now I'm doing podcasts. Like, okay, I'll be a good public speaker if I want to be a public speaker. This can be applied to anything. Like. Whether you want to, like, oh, I'm just, I'm just not athletic or I'm, I'm just not, um, I don't have the body type to be a figure or whatever competitor. You can do it. Yeah. Right. Just because you have bigger arms or whatever it may be, you can figure out a way to get however you want to get whatever vision you have. And it could be as big as, like, owning a business or as small as, like, I want to I wanna be funny, right? Mm. I want to be the funny person in my group. I don't want to be a big comedian, but in my friends, I want to be funny. Okay. Research some things, yeah. you know, like study some things, trial and error, figure it out, like enjoy the process while you're doing it. Like whatever it is you want to do or you have this vision that you maybe think you're not because of you're not privy to that or you weren't born that or genetics, like mm-hmm. disagree. Right. Like you can do whatever it is and it's so much more than just you can be whatever you want to be. Like it's down to the details. Like right. you can be... Literally, whatever you vision, whatever character you want to be, whatever characteristics you want to have, um, whatever body type, anything like that, you just got to do it. Yeah. I think the distinction that people make is, um, you know, when people say I'm a hard gainer, um, that might be true, but hard people automatically say that. And I think even though they say hard gainer, what they think is it's impossible for me to gain weight. It's an instant mental block. Right. Um, it's hard for me to lose weight. And what they think is it's impossible for, I'm going to have to look the way I look. And that's actually a really good distinction. It's something that, that you brought up because I think, uh, just knowing that in your mind is like hard just means you have to figure out a new fucking way around. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. It could be a different path than everybody else. Yeah. But, um, no, I feel strongly against or strongly about this, and it's just coming more 
shining more in me, especially this cat last like couple years, and I almost like it now when someone tells me something I do, negative, me and up. I'm like, oh really? Yeah. Oh, watch me go! Yeah. Watch me do yeah. this! Watch like, what the fuck I do next! Yeah, it, it, me too. And uh, it's gonna be even more impressive because I'm not doing it this normal path. I'm figuring out new new ways. Like, yeah, I and I believe everyone can be like that. This isn't just me. Like, I wasn't always like that. I've grown into this, and I everyone yeah. can do it. Everyone can do it. Uh, the big thing is that it does take a certain mindset. And mm-hmm. so like having that limited belief system about yourself and the way that you show up in the world is probably the hardest thing to overcome because although it's possible, it still takes a mindset that requires it. You know, the amount of people that tell me like, I do not have a runner's body. When I show up to ultra marathons, people are <laughs> like, dude, you look, even the last one, like I was on mile like 170 and the guy's like, you're big for this. I'm like, that's what they say. <laughs> like, <laughs> Heard about here I am at mile 170, just like you are in the same fucking build. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. So, I mean, that's, but, but just, you know, drawing light to the fact that it, it really is about your mindset as you approach what's hard mm-hmm. more than it is, um, you know, anything else. Definitely. Cool. I think that's a good kicker. Good place to end. For sure. All right. Awesome. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening to Lionheart Radio. I hope that the information from today's show will make you fitter, happier, and healthier. For the show notes of this episode and every episode, head to www.lionheartrad.io. Yep, just like Lionheart Radio. And please, if you have the time, head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. It really helps us to know that we're on the right track in delivering you reliable information and value. As always, feedback is welcome. If you have any comments on the show or like to suggest a guest, send me an email at rick at louaviv.com. That's L-U-A-V-I-V-E dot com. Thanks for your support, and we will see you next time. Bitch, I feel good. Don't I look stupendous? My shine is so endless, and shit you can do to end this. Even when I'm dead, niggas still gon' bump that chip shit. Coke white, escalate on cinches for you dipshit. So you won't forget this. Midwest nigga be the coldest. Cleveland.